Welcome. We probably all know and are used to hardware debugging using a hardware debugging probe with JTAG signals or a single wire debug or SWD. So how cool would it be to use just a normal CAN framework or CAN network instead of a dedicated debug connection to, hardware de to do hardware debugging on a target board? My name is Eric Steiger and that's exactly what I want to show you here is basically the result of a university research project where we accomplished hardware debugging over CAN, actually over CAN FD. So what I'm showing you here is basically just a quick guided tour about how it works and how it feels. So basically it's a project which enables you to debug over the CAN wire or the CAN network while all the participating nodes on the network are still communicating. And we enable the hardware debugging over the CAN network, basically interleaved with the normal CAN traffic. Um, you find details on, on my blog mconeclips.com, but what I show here is basically as well, everything is open source and shared as well on GitLab. And the GitLab project or the whole research project basically consists of three parts. Uh, one is the so-called Cortex debug agent. That's an agent running on the, the debug target or device under test. So this is part basically part of the firmware running on the target board. There is a, a dedicated CAN debug gateway. This gateway is basically the interface between the host PC and the CAN network. And there are several example projects uh, for NXP boards, which are used in, in this project. So I'm going to briefly explain you that the hardware setup and walking you through a basic uh, build debug setup. So what I'm showing here under the camera is basically two boards. Uh, on the blue board here, that's a NXP LPC 55S16 uh, evaluation kit EVK board. And this board here acts as a gateway to the CAN network. So this USB connection up here, uh, this pink connection, this one is connected to my host computer and it's using not the debug port of this board here, of this device here, it's using the native USB port of this LPC 55S16. So basically this device here is translating the uh, debug messages from the host, actually seems this tap, to the CAN network. And this device here supports CAN FD and it's exposed here on this uh, DB9 connector. And this green and uh, yellow cable are CAN high and CAN low connections from this gateway board down to the target board here. Right now in this uh, CAN network, there's just one node in here. That's a uh, Freedom MCXN947 board from, from NXP. Both boards are uh, Cortex M33, but actually it doesn't really matter. All what it matters is that's a Cortex M33, uh, four or, or even seven or M33. So the concept works for all Cortex M devices except Cortex M0, which doesn't have the hardware capabilities. So what is happening here is basically this board here is receiving, is acting as a kind of a, a dummy debug probe. So it exposes a SIMSYS DAP debug probe over this USB connection and then basically sends the SIMSYS DAP commands over the CAN network to the target device here. Uh, the target device has a special hardware or software and, and interrupts enabled on it, basically a, a daemon, a debug daemon, which gets the SIMSYS DAP debug messages and allows the target here to do basically on target hardware debugging. So you can do stepping, register inspection, memory inspection. The framework even supports uh, flash programming and debugging with Visual Studio Code. You see here an application is already running here, the blinking the red LED on the device on the test. And down here, there's a, a heartbeat green LED, which blinks periodically, basically indicating that this device here is, is working properly. Uh, I'm using here two NXP boards with the NXP link server, and everything can be used with the command line interface. And just to show you how this basically shows here, if I do a, a probe, uh, scan with link server probes. 
then it takes a few seconds, it scans all the USB devices and then recognizes this board here as a CAN debug gateway, a CMC stuff debug gateway with a serial number. That serial number can be assigned to multiple ports, so you can use multiple debug gateways in your system if you like to do so. It recognizes the target device, so it's MCX N974 using the CMC step commands and as well the, the, uh, the board type in there. So that's quite handy with the latest link server version. So with that board organized and, and basically recognized here, I'll show you quickly basically the firmware, so the, the CAN debug gateway that's part of this project. I have it open here in Visual Studio Code. And there is as well some um, documentation files in there explaining how to set it up, how to basically register the USB ID of the device to be properly recognized, and as well how to use it. For Linux, you have to uh, add a special UDEF rule, but that's kind of a standard thing if you add USB devices. So what basically runs on that application firmware is basically just a CAN stack uh, from the NXP SDK and basically just interfaces or has a USB interface and exposes a USB SIMSYS DAP device. Uh, quickly looking into the main function here. So it, it runs a SysDIC handler and basically that's turning on and off this little green LED, it's an RGB LED, basically just turns it on, the traffic LED, uh, the heartbeat LED and turns it off. There's a second LED, the red LED, you will see that later on. Just showing the, the camera again quickly. So on, on that little LED here as well, it turns red whenever there is basically a, a SIMC step communication over the CAN bus. So while the green LED here is blinking slowly, it's basically indicating that the gateway is working. And as soon we will see that later on this turns red, basically means that it's uh, producing some traffic over the CAN bus. Right now here, there is a red LED running on, on the target board. And the goal is now that we basically erase the target here and basically reprogram it with a new application. So how to do that? I'll switch to the other project. That's the a bare metal. We support as well free Arthos application or any other Arthos applications. So that's the application running on that board here. So looking quickly into the main, basically going op open the files here. It basically initializes just the, the normal pins and clocking and initializes the, the, can, uh, the CAN driver and then just enters in an endless loop and basically just counting up a counter. Everything else is then running in interrupt with the debug agent as well as with the CAN network. And as you see here right now, there's a cystic handler, which basically is, is toggling that uh, red LED we see here. So let's quickly change that to something else. Say let's, let's toggle the green LED, saving it and just building the application. So what it does is, if I go here into the CMake list, scrolling down here a little bit until here. So here you see this CMake include directive, which basically includes or runs another CMake. Uh, what this is, is basically the debug agent framework. So what I've shown before, getting the web browser here. So this is this debug agent framework here. So this is a, a dedicated re a Git repository, and this is included as a sub-repository here in this directory structure for the examples here. And this is basically the Cortex debug agent, which is able to do hardware debugging with uh, halting, stepping, setting hardware breakpoints, uh, reading, writing the memory, doing the all the, the call stack tracing, and includes as well flash memory programming. So this is simply added to the this uh, firmware project as a basically a, a sub CMake project, and which builds this application up here. So. Checking here the, the readme MD file as for documentation, it explains as well how everything can be used on the command line. So I'm first going to use that on the command line. Basically, I'm using the link server command line interface to erase the target board. 
So just to see that uh, in, in parallel, just grab the camera somewhere on another screen here. So application is still running up here. So what I'm going to use is basically the erase command. So organizing things, we, we can see everything on the display here. And maybe take something like this here. So you, you see basically the ports up here. So I am already have a command line prompt up here. So I simply copy the command here. copy paste so you'll see that then the lpc acts as a gateway you will see that the led here is becoming more red and erases the application on the target so it already communicates now over the usb port detects the debug probe and you see here now it stops blinking because the erase process just was going on and the mass erase has been completed now the next step is i want to program the target application remember we changed the led so here again it's communicating with the board you see here it's it's getting more red here indicating basically the can communication with this icon here programs the board and now you see the green led here is blinking so what i've shown is basically i'm able to use the command line interface to the, the link server to erase the flash and program the binary over the can network and of course, everything can be done as well from Visual Studio Code. So what I've prepared here is as well some terminal tasks. So I have here a link server erase and flash task. So here it's as a task in Visual Studio 3. And here that's the target. It basically executes the thing I've just demonstrated on the command line as at target task. So I can do the same here with run uh, no terminal run task erase and flash. And now everything is executed here uh, in, in the console. So that's easier than just uh, copy pasting the command line interface. But of course you have full control over the commands. You want to do that like that. Um, now I even can use Visual Studio Code to debug the application for this. I've prepared a, a launch configuration here. There is a, an, an attach can bus configuration uh, and basically it uses the probe serial number. So this serial number here to talk to the target device over the can network. So I can simply use here the debug button and now it communicates over the CAN bus to the target interface, launches a debug session, takes a few seconds, and for example, I can pause the application. So you see here the application is, is paused, so I can increment the counter here. Uh, I can set a breakpoint here, continue it, until it basically reaches the toggle command or a statement or a function call, and I can just step over it, continue running. So this, I can do interrupt debugging, I can do threat debugging, task debugging. I can inspect memory, just the usual things with, with debugging. So I set another breakpoint here, continue running. And that way I can do simple, well, simply I can do hardware debugging over the CAN network. And as you see, the performance is very reasonable. So I can do stepping in just as it would be a local basically connection to my target system and I can continue running it, pausing it, uh, inspecting the register, the hardware registers. Of course, I see the call stack as well. So I can set the breakpoint here. I can do step into. So in essence, I can just do normal debugging as it would be basically a local target connected to my PC, but instead, I have a CAN connection to my target system. So that way I can debug any CAN nodes in that CAN network individually or all together. And, and basically I have a, debug, a hardware debugging interface to uh, a serial wire, so to speak. 
Um, this is a brief overview about how this looks like uh, debugging over CAN, so hardware debugging over CAN or explicitly on, on CAN FD. Uh, please check out my blog for all the other details or check out the details in the video description. Thank you and happy hardware debugging over CAN.